A couple of years ago, Alexi posted this video, which brought a lot of confusion. Here, bottom left, a tweezers discharges the capacitor and the ruler bounces up. So this capacitor is already charged. And as he discharges it with those tweezers, we see a deflection upwards, apparently as he claims, caused by the wavy design creating a gravitational shielding effect that the ruler experiences. To demonstrate that same effect, we'll go ahead and discharge this capacitor. All right, we'll charge it up one more time. All right, and then we will discharge it. So, no surprise, when the capacitor is no longer charged, we don't get any attraction of the balance. But is that all there is to the story? Of course, it's not a new concept. In 1989, John LaForge filed this patent, and here he demonstrates that if you take two metallic conductors, you charge them to a high voltage, and then you add additional charge to one of those two metallic conductors, the extra charges will flow into it and displace additional charges, free electrons, inside that second metallic conductor and give an unbalanced charge that we see here, and this charge changes epsilon of space-time, creating a distortion in the permeativity and a consequent propulsive force. A few years back, I did construct a version of LaForge's thruster, which gave me weak positive results until it started arcing, as we can see here. But this is definitely a project that I would very much like to revisit sometime in the future in another video. Where LaForge and Alexi are both talking about a time varying charge and discharge, this particular device by Nasikas is called a wavy capacitor and the internal electrode here is asymmetrical, surrounded by a dielectric and encased in a metallic conductor. And he states that with a continuous DC charge, not time varying, this device should produce a propulsive force. And I'll also have a link to this Nasikis patent in the description below. So I built several versions of this and I can tell you they definitely do not perform under the expected conditions, but with the current test setup, we might be able to observe some of those similar effects. So let's take a look. To demonstrate this, I'll explain what I have going on. This is a high voltage power supply. I've got each of these electrodes set up to about 10,000 volts output. This is our ground, positive, negative. Now, Alexi had his bottom plate, I believe, negatively grounded or floating. And so in this case, I have it connected to the negative output of the multiplier. And the top plate is currently connected to nothing. This red wire connected to the alligator clip here and sitting free at the end of the screwdriver. So now what we'll do to test his claim is we'll first make sure the top electrode is not charged by grounding it. And now we'll give it a small amount of positive charge. So here we go, let's charge it slightly positive. And this is just by leakage. I've sharpened the ends of those wires so that I can spray ions onto this without touching it. Well, it does appear there's a slight deflection upwards once again, we'll ground it. And then we'll give it a few positive ions. Well, isn't that curious? So it does appear that instead of electrostatic attraction, like we'd expect, we are getting some kind of an effect, right? But watch this. If I continue to charge that top plate positively, we can see that it acts conventionally with electrostatic attraction, just like we would expect. So I'll discharge it. And it may still have a little bit of imbalance charge on it, but you can see roughly about where it rests. So what the heck is going on here? Well, uh, first off, let me answer a question to you, Dr. Jaynes, who asked about how do we get rid of the electrostatic attraction problems 
Well, you've got to get your capacitor off the table because the edges of those metallic conductors will leak charges all over the place and cause you all kinds of measurement errors. So the least you can do is at least get it off the table and do the same with your scale. Now, I would love to stick this whole thing in a vacuum chamber and find out for sure what's going on, but presently I believe it is an atmospheric gas displacement phenomena and so I do not think it'll work in a vacuum based on some prior experiments, but we won't know for sure until I have a chance to miniaturize this and fit it in my chamber. So hopefully that helped clear a few things up and also gave you a few more things to think about. And until next time, take it easy.